Hey, good Thursday morning, everybody. It's Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich. Another week and another severe weather outbreak. The good news for the Carolinas, the risk looks lower than even last week's low risk, but to the west, another high risk day. Just incredible to see this setup unfolding again uh, this week. You can see the system. It's a huge system, and it's got a couple different uh, fronts attached. But this main warm front to the south is the one we're watching. Now, we're seeing some rain this morning. Again, this is a fast-moving wave of rain. This is going to move in and out quickly, and we might actually see the sun come out with temperatures skyrocketing. Unlike last week's system, which was here and then moved due east, this one's moving in this direction, so the energy is going to lift up into the Ohio Valley and kind of bypass most of our area. But you can see already some storms this morning in northern Alabama, Mississippi, but that's not the main action. That is coming later today um, as the severe weather risk will be heightened in this area again. Let me turn off the satellite and put the radar on, and you could see another rare extreme or if you watched SBC Outlooks, high risk day, second week in a row. And you can see where that is centered over northern parts of Alabama, northeastern Mississippi, and into parts of Tennessee. This is going to be a rough day for areas in the Mid-South again into the evening hours. I'll turn the radar off and you can see that slight or low risk does move into western North Carolina. And that's mainly because any storms that develop late this afternoon will be dying as they push to the east and affecting the North Carolina mountains. And I'll talk a little bit about that some of the ingredients there for that setup. Tomorrow's risk, you could see, is a low, low risk along the front as it pushes south and east of us. So um, there is a risk in the afternoon tomorrow. We could see things kind of flare back up um, as we go into the afternoon hours, especially to the areas uh, just to our south and east. But again, today today's the real story here, and you could see that risk. And I'm going to quickly put the tornado probabilities on here. Um, and just to show you that area in the middle there, the red area, see if this will actually work. Um, this is actually a 30% probability right in here for tornadoes within 25 miles. This is the, the 15 and then 10 and then 5 and 2. So just a, just a bullseye of significant tornadoes. And this area highlighted in, in, the, in the pink here is where we could see significant tornadoes. So basically long track um, tornadoes possible in this area. So let's take a quick look. Um, at the future cast as we go forward with this. So here's a look at that short range guidance here as we look at the future cast. You can see the rain over us this morning and again we'll go through time and this first batch of thunderstorms heading towards the mountains likely will be weakening but it's something to keep an eye on because we could see some flash flooding especially in southwestern part of the state where we get that upslope but you see the storms developing this afternoon. Look at the time frame up there a 4 30 our time and you can see this is when the storms right around this evening these will be the supercells in that area that was highlighted earlier. And again, just to reiterate, that's look at that right there, right where those are forming. Those are the storms we're worried about. But I will say this, as we go into the evening, we'll have to watch some of these storms that move into North Carolina, potentially some strong storms in there as well along the warm front, even though most of the energy is back to the west. But overall, the threat is low. And you can see through time, will go as this front moves through and this is going into tonight the front starts to weaken a little bit and again all the energy is up here in Ohio so I actually think you know believe it or not the biggest threat for severe weather might be right there um, around eight nine o'clock this evening as those storms that form earlier in the day try to make a run at us but here's the front you can see it just absolutely falls apart um, doesn't mean there couldn't be a strong storm or two embedded in there with some gusty winds as it pushes off to the east and then you see it there kind of fall apart. And I'll, I'll show you that significant tornado parameter. We show you this quite a bit. And again, this is today. Look at that that significant tornado parameter over Mississippi, Alabama. And as we go through time, notice a little bit of that energy tries to shift into the mountains this evening. And again, this is going into tonight um, towards midnight. Then it starts to weaken. But there's enough ingredients there that the mountains, in particular, that's why we've got that low risk in place there. Um, as that line pushes east. So that is definitely something we'll have to watch. It's one of those events um, where the threat is not huge, but it's also not zero. Um, so we've got to keep a close eye on that potential tonight because I do think some of these storms here, especially the ones right here, have me a little worried this evening that we might get one or two rogue storms that could go severe. Um, this afternoon or this evening into the overnight hours as that, that system pushes east. But I will emphasize this again, compared to the threat to the west, this is really, really tiny threat overall. This is going to be a big deal for parts 
uh, of the Mid-South. So if you have family or friends here, and I'm specifically talking about this area that's going to be shaded in red and pink, please let them know to be weather aware today. That is a huge risk for the second week in a row in almost the identical location. So while we keep an eye on this stuff back to the west, for our area right now, the risk is relatively low. Damaging winds would be our primary concern, and there is a low-end tornado risk. It's not zero. Um, hail threat is kind of low. The flooding threat's a little deceiving. It's kind of low for most of our area, but I'll tell you what, these areas in the mountains and foothills where we get this strong upslope flow, which is going to happen tonight. We're going to see a strong southerly, what we call low-level jet, that intersects the mountains there. We could see some localized flooding, especially where any storms kind of anchor on the eastern facing slopes. So stay weather aware today and tonight through tomorrow morning. It's a very small window. Again, not as, as big a threat as last week, but still not zero. It's still a good, good uh, uh, idea to have a couple ways to get warnings. Make sure the phone is charged up. Grab our app if you can. Again, this is severe weather season. I hope we don't see these high risks always developing to our west, but it is the time of year that we start to watch these storms. So keep a, an eye on the sky and make sure you stay weather aware and stay tuned for updates. I'll post them throughout the day and track anything that looks suspicious or severe.